Before we do some alkene nomenclature, let's take a look at two famous alkenes. So over here on the left, we have R-limonene. So the E-N-E -E ending um, gives away the fact that limonene contains double bonds in it. So R-limonene smells like oranges. So it's the molecule that gives oranges its smell. So even if you've never heard of the limonene molecule, you've definitely smelled it before. Over here on the right, we have another alkene called alpha-pinene. So again, the E-N-E -E ending tells you that there's an alkene or a double bond presence in the molecule. Uh, alpha-pinene is one of the main constituents of turpentine, which most people know is a solvent used in oil painting. And some people think that turpentine has a bad smell to it, and that's incorrect. There, there are definitely some bad forms of turpentine, but if you get some high-quality turpentine, alpha-pinene has a very, very nice smell. So limonene and alpha-pinene, two molecules with great smells to them. Let's take a look at some simpler alkenes and see if we can name them. All right, so if I were to look at an alkene, it looks like this, let's go like that and put our double bond right here. And how would I name this according to IUPAC nomenclature? Well, when we named our alkanes, the first thing we did was we found the longest carbon chain. And we're going to do the same thing for alkenes, um, except this time we're going to find the longest carbon chain that includes our double bond. So the longest carbon chain that includes our double bond, well, you could go like this. So that would be the longest carbon chain, including our double bond. And how many carbons is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six total carbons. When we were naming alkanes, we called a six carbon alkane, we called that hexane. Obviously, we can no longer use that name. Uh, we do have six carbons, but we have a double bond present in, in the molecule. So it is an alkene, it is not an alkane. And we've just seen how the E-N-E -E ending is used to identify alkenes. So instead of an A-N-E -E ending for an alkane, we're going to use an E-N-E -E ending. So instead of hexane, we're going to call this hexene. When I go to my next step, I need to number my carbon chain. And I'm going to number it to give the double bond the lowest number possible. So I have two options. I could start from this carbon up here at the right. On the top right, I could make that carbon number one. Or I could start down here with this carbon at the bottom. I could make that carbon number one. You want to give your double bond the lowest number possible. So I'm going to start with the carbon at the top right being carbon one. So if this is carbon one, this must be carbon two. This must be carbon three, four, five, and six. So my double bond starts at carbon two. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two in front of this and make it two hexene. So it's implied that the carbon that, that the double bond finishes at the next carbon. So the double bond spans uh, the distance between carbon two and carbon three. So I have two hexene here. So let's go ahead and finish naming this. I have to worry about my substituents. I have two methyl groups at carbons four and five. So I could go ahead and name this. 4,5 dimethyl, and then I have the 2 hexene, like that. So that is an, an acceptable IUPAC way of naming, although this is kind of an old school way of naming, and since I was taught by an old school professor, um, this is the way that, that I've always done it. So 4,5 dimethyl, 2 hexene. Um, the other way of doing it would be to write 4,5 dimethyl. And then write hex, and then put the 2 between the hex and the ene. So hex 2ene is, a, is, is another way of writing it. And, and this is the way that recent IUPAC recommendations uh, say to do it. So 4,5-dimethyl hex 2ene is the more recent way of naming it. 4,5-dimethyl 2-hexene is the older way of naming it. Uh, for most professors, both ways are acceptable, but make sure to double check with your professor. All right, let's name another alkene. This time, we'll talk about an alkene that's in a ring. So let's look at let's look at a molecule that looks like this. So let's go ahead and name that. Okay, well, find my longest carbon chain. In this in this case, it's a ring, right? So how many carbons are in this ring? There are six carbons in this ring. So a six-carbon ring 
alkane would be, would be cyclohexane. But since there's a double bond present in this molecule, we are going to call it cyclohexene. So I have cyclohexene. Okay, next thing we need to do is to number this molecule. So let's see, what could I do to number this molecule? Well, I could make this carbon number one, or I could make this carbon number one. And let's go ahead and draw this molecule again, and, and let's name it those two different ways and see which one is the correct way to name this molecule. So let's, let's start, let's say on the left, let's, let's make this carbon number one on the left. So if I make that carbon number one, let's go ahead and put a color on it. So if I make this carbon number one, then that implies that the double bond starts at one and then finishes at two. So this must be carbon two right here. And that makes this carbon three over here like that. On the right, I'm going to make this carbon number one. So if this is carbon number one, I have to go in the direction of the double bonds. So I have to make this carbon number two. And to get to that methyl group, I have to go all the way around like that. So you can see the way on the left gives me a methyl group at three, and the way on the right gives me a methyl group at six. So the way on the right is not the proper way to number your ring. The way on the left is the correct way to do it. So the official name, we can go ahead and put three methyl cyclohexene, like that. All right, what about some substituents containing double bonds? So what about if you had something like this coming off of your molecule? So we'll put a little funny line there to indicate this is coming off of a molecule. This is called a vinyl group. So a vinyl group. Let's look at another one that looks very similar to a vinyl group. So something like this coming off of your molecule will be called an allele. So this is an allele, and then on the left we have a vinyl group. So let's do an example that includes one of these substituents so we can see how to name it. So let's go like this. So how would we name this molecule? Well, once again, we have, we look for our, our ring. So there are, let's see, six carbons in my ring. So it would be cyclo hexane, but since there's a double bond present, we know it's cyclohexene. So let me go ahead and write cyclohexene here. Now we have to figure out how to number this guy. So I could make this carbon number one on my ring, or I could make this carbon number one on my ring. And I think with the experience we have so far, it's obvious that I want to make the top carbon number one um, to give my substituent the lowest number possible. So now I have my substituent having a um, being on carbon one, and that of course is a vinyl group, right? So you can see there's a vinyl group coming off of carbon one. So I can go ahead and finish naming it by saying one vinyl cyclohexene. Now when you have these ones in here, and if you leave them out, they're implied. So you could say vinyl cyclohexene, and, and most people would assume that you mean carbon one for the double bond, for the start of the double bond, and for your substituent. So let's do one more example, and this time let's do an example that has two double bonds in it. So let's look at something like this, and let's go ahead and put a halogen in there too. So how would I name this molecule? Well, our steps are to find the carbon chain, right? Longest carbon chain that includes your double bonds, so that would be four carbons like that. So four carbons, um, our root for four carbons is butte. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write butte here for four carbons. Now I have two double bonds in this molecule, and I need to figure out how to number my chain. I can start from the left or I can start from the right. And again, I think with the experience you have, you, you, you can pretty much figure out we're going to start from the left to make this carbon number one, two, three, and four. If I do it this way, you can see that the first double bond starts at one, and the second double bond starts at three, and the, and the chlorine substituent comes off of carbon two. If I chose the other way from the right, I would have the same numbers for the double bonds, right? The double bonds would be at one and three again, but I would have a number three for the chlorine substituent. So I think it's obvious that you want to start from the left here. So I have two double bonds at carbon one and carbon three. So I have two double bonds. So how am I going to represent that? Well, I, start, I have two double bonds at one and three. So I'm going to go like that. 
And two double bonds, our prefix for two was die, and our ending for an alkene is ene. So I have diene. So I have a diene here, and so let's go ahead and write diene. So I have diene, and just to make the name sound better, if you put a vowel in here, it just flows better. So we're going to put an A to get 1,3-butadiene. And then to finish off the name, we have our chlorine coming off of carbon two. So for halogens, we're going to write we're going to write two chloro like this. So it's uh, chloro, bromo, fluoro, or iodo. So two chloro, one three butadiene is the correct name for this molecule.